In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of all ages, amen. Today is the first Sunday of the blessed month of Hatur. And I don't know if you remember, but the theme of this month uh, is basically the seed and the sower, or the word of God and the heart, <clears throat> as we'll talk about today. Um, and so if you recall, the first and second Sundays are the same message, the same parable from different Gospels, as well as um, in the Vespers as well, because this is mentioned in the three, the three Gospels, the first three Gospels. Okay, that's right. Um, so this is kind of the structure of the month, and we call it Bible Awareness Month, because uh, in the early days or in, in the poor places in Egypt, this is the time after the inundation of the Nile and, or, or right before, and the seeds are sown, right? Um, and so the church said, okay, let us apply whatever the people are doing in their job and in their work and in their life. Let us relate it to the, the spiritual life, which is more important. Um, so the church tries to apply, you know, the daily life to the spiritual life and vice versa. <clears throat> so this was the month after the harvest, sorry, um, after the inundation of the water. So this, the, the seed was already sown, but now it's the time to reap in the har harvest, okay? Um, <clears throat> and so um, the main theme is, uh, what we'll talk about today is the seed. And usually we talk about the sower, or we talk about the different types of ground, um, but we'll read a, a, a bit of the passage today is from Luke chapter 8, and next uh, Sunday, God willing, is from Matthew chapter 13. <clears throat> so uh, the Lord says this parable, he says, when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. The sower went out to sleep, and as he said, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down. The birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on the rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Some fell on the rocks, and the thorns. Us a okay. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. And then the disciples are asking. <coughs> he he can he concludes with the same. Um, statement that he does in other places in the gospel. He who has hears, ears to hear, let him hear, talking about the, the, the soil. And we'll talk about the golden ear in, in, at the end. Um, but then his disciples ask him, saying, give us an explanation. Um, then before he gives the explanation, explanation, he says, explanation is not for every end, it's for those who are prepared for those who want the kingdom, um, <clears throat> it will be revealed to them, right? For those who don't, it's just, it's, it's not going to be um, beneficial because they won't understand and they won't see. Seeing they may not see. Um, so here he's talking about the spiritual blindness and the spiritual deafness. But the verse I wanted to talk about today is when the Lord starts explaining, he starts with the seed. Okay, he says the seed is the word of God. <clears throat> and we kind of probably already know this and we glance over it. Um, and um, it seems kind of insignificant part of the parable. Um, and seeds themselves seem to be relatively insignificant because they're small and uh, they appear to be powerless and useless. <clears throat> um, but... As we know, uh, each seed is a great miracle. Um, inside of that little, I mean, some seeds are big, some seeds are small, but inside of that relatively small seed, it has the power, uh, uh, great power, more than, you know, any bodybuilder, they say, oh, he could lift, I don't know, three, four, five times his weight, whatever, like, the seed is more powerful than that, right? It has um, power to move rocks and, and to um, break concrete, um, not in the very beginning stages, but at, at after full mat maturation. It has the power to transform, you know, from one little, you know, 
tenth of an ounce or not even, you know, to something that, you know, uh, can reach hundreds of feet high. Um, and it has the power of life in itself, although it appears dead, right? <clears throat> so when you start analyzing what a seed is, um, I think we, we take seeds for granted. And equally so, unfortunately, some of us, we take the word of God for granted. Maybe we do believe that there is power in it and it's transformational and there's life in it, but the way we deal with it um, sometimes doesn't reflect so. Um, <clears throat> because as the rest of the parable talks about, it needs faith, it needs consistent watering, it needs a good environment for it to bear fruit. The same thing with the Word of God. The Word of God is powerful to do anything. But the problem is not with the seed. Oftentimes, it's with the, the soil. Like, for example, I was reading the other day, um, a few years back in Egypt. Um, now they're uncovering a lot of, you know, archaeological finds, if, if you read the news. But <clears throat> a few years back, they found a, a, an Egyptian tomb. Um, and in it, there was a bunch of barley seeds. And they said, oh, this is 3,000 years old. It's pointless, right? But nevertheless, someone said, okay, I'm just going to take it anyway and dig in the ground and, and bury it. And it, it bore fruit or wheat, right? <clears throat> so the God's the word is the same. It has a great power. Some people say, oh, it's thousands of years old uh, scripture. Um, what does it apply to this day and age? Um, it's the word of God. It has power to, to convert, you know, thousands and millions of people from the, from the beginning, from, from the time of the Old Testament, right, until today and in the future. Why? Because God is not limited and his word is not fruitless. <clears throat> um, unless we don't have the faith to, um, to water it or to, to place it in a good environment in our heart. Okay, so God's word is powerful, it's transformational, and it's life-giving. <clears throat> and where do we get this information from the word of God itself, right? Uh, as St. Paul says, the word of God is living and powerful. The seed is living, or it's life-giving, and it's very powerful. Um, and the more we convict ourselves of this truth, we see it in the way we deal with the scripture, and how often we read the Bible, and how we try um, or to exercise to memorize certain verses, um, <clears throat> in how often we bring it to remembrance in our daily life. Um, that's the reflection of how powerful we truly believe that the Word of God is. And in, again, as St. Paul says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for us to understand what the true faith is, for reproof, for correction, um, as we see in the mirror, we correct ourselves. Um, as again, St. Paul says, for instruction in righteousness. You wanna be holy, you have to read the word of God. Um, there was not, I mean, out of the millions of saints we have, there are very few who didn't read the word of God. And I think that was because some of them were illiterate, for example, um, <clears throat> but they knew the word of God and they lived the word of God. Um, but for the 99.9% .9 of the rest, they, they were fluent in, in scripture to the point that they memorized, um, some of them memorized the whole scripture, um, like the, the great fathers of old. Um, so this should encourage us to um, take the word of God as this powerful uh, seed. <clears throat> and it makes us, uh, it says that the man or person of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to do good works, you need the scripture. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord Jesus Christ himself says, the words that I speak to you, the gospel, or the, the holy word of God, are spirit, because God is spirit, <clears throat> and it was written by the Holy Spirit, working through the several authors in scripture, and they are life. What does that mean? The words that I speak to you are life. It means not only are they given to us from the author of life, God, but they give us life, not just eternal life, but they give us the power to live according to the word of God um, now. So some people say um, it's important just to read scripture. Like even if we don't understand it, even if we don't um, 
know the meanings behind it, we have to start somewhere. And the, where we start is by reading. Um, <clears throat> and then when we know that it has the power to change our life, then we ask God, let this word change my life, and it will. Um, but if I, if I don't take the first or the second step by reading and asking for it to change me, then, then the problem, again, is, is, with, is with me and not the word of God. <clears throat> I know a lot of this is basic, but we just need out at least an annual remembrance. The church gives us this annual remembrance, you know, uh, of this parable. <clears throat> and if you look at a lot of the lives of the saints, I just put four uh, here, some from scripture, some from not. It, the word of God changed. Who's the one who was a tax collector, became disciple? Yes, Levi became St. Matthew. What was the word or the words that changed his life? Lord just said, I don't know in Aramaic, it was probably one word, but in English, it's two words, follow me. Is that all it took? Um, yes and no. Like the Lord only told him, follow me. <clears throat> but most likely he was preparing himself and his heart was ready to hear the word of God and do it. That's what we ask, right, in the litany of the gospel. Make us worthy to hear and to act according to your holy gospels, right? <clears throat> so it was able to transform his life um, because he was prepared and he was, he was ready to do whatever the Lord told him, right? Like St. Paul, he said, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do, right? Um, and he was a persecutor of the church to the point where he was standing, as you know, at uh, at at the place where those who were stoning St. Stephen threw their clothes. He was kind of guarding and watching their clothes. And he, and he was a persecutor of the church so much that um, they ran away when they heard where he was going. <clears throat> um, but the Lord came to him and um, with very few words, he was transformed. Um, again, because he was looking for the truth and he was um, ready to hear and to act according to what the Lord told him. Um, St. Anthony, as we kind of studied his life already, but his whole life changed when he heard just a few words of the gospel. And he was raised knowing scripture, but he left the faith at, uh, in his teens. Um, and for about 20 years or so, he was far from God. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking of St. Augustine. That was, that's the next one. <laughs> um, uh, uh, St. Anthony was also raised by godly parents. Um, and he was meditating his life on scripture at a young age, to the point when he heard the word of God in church that he already knew very well. Um, it had power to change him. So there's, again, something that has to be said about when we hear the word of God in the church, it has a special power than just outside of the church. Um, <clears throat> uh, because like I was saying, he was contemplating on the life of the apostles on his way to church. And then when he heard the gospel, if you want to be perfect, go sell all that we have. It, he, he took this as the, the personal um, message uh, to him. <clears throat> and then St. Augustine, as we said, he heard um, he was living an ungodly life for a lot of his youth. And he came to a point where um, his heart started convicting him, or the Holy Spirit started to convict him. And then he sat in a garden and he heard, he thought about opening scripture. And then he heard a voice that said, take up and read. Um, and so he read scripture, he read the Romans, uh, St. Paul to the Romans, to chapter 13, and a few verses there. And from that point on, he abandoned his sinful life and became a great uh, saint in the church. So then we ask, okay, these are nice saint stories, but does, does the same power, you know, of that seed have power to change me? Of course. Um, uh, and if I remember the power in it, maybe um, it will have more effect in, in my daily life. Um, so just a few more you know, uh, anecdotes about what the scripture of God is for us. Um, we say the communion is the bread of life, uh, and rightfully so. 
right? But also scripture tells us that just like we need nourishment on a daily basis from the communion, we need nourishment on a daily basis from the scripture. Um, <clears throat> and we can't have communion without scripture that we read in the church, right? Um, but in addition to that, we should read as much as we can every day um, from the scripture, even if it's just a little. So I always encourage even the, the young children, um, don't like the, the importance in the beginning is to set the discipline. So if, if we practice to read every day, even if it's only a few verses, it's much better than reading like 10 chapters one day and then not reading for 10 days. Doesn't, that, that's, it's like taking, you know, oh, I, I'm going to get sick. I'll take, you know, a bottle of medicine, the whole bottle of medicine today, and then I won't take it the rest of the month. <laughs> that's not how we take our medicine, <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> it needs um, a daily effect. Right, just like when we water the plant, we can't just say, oh, it rained, um, there was a storm last week, it, it's, it's good for the next couple of weeks. <laughs> you, have you ever seen like the, the, the grass that comes on the mountain after the rain? So it's very nice, God rained, God rained his you know, blessing on it. But then what happens after a couple of weeks when there's no rain? <laughs> it turns brown again. Um, that's, that's what happens to us if, if, us if we don't live by every word of the God on a daily, um, on a daily basis. <clears throat> um, and so we have to treasure it. Like Job says, I have treasured the words of his mouth, scripture, more than my daily bread. More? Okay. So does that, some of the, um, you know, fathers, um, like one of our confession fathers, or spiritual fathers, used to tell us, um, if you don't read the word of God <clears throat> in the morning, don't eat breakfast. <laughs> or before you eat breakfast, then you have, you have to eat. Um, and we got scared, <laughs> and we followed. Um, <clears throat> but this is, this is the bread of the angels, as uh, St. Gregory says. <clears throat> so the word of God is our food, and it is also our mirror, Right? As St. James says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. <clears throat> For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of person he was. Um, so here he's saying, okay, when, why do we look in the mirror? To fix anything that is out of place, right? Um, say, I don't need the mirror. <laughs> well, everyone else will tell will be the mirror for you. Uh, you, you. You didn't wash your face today, or you have something right here, right? Or you need a haircut, right? Um, <clears throat> but if we're constantly like, I, I'm not encouraging you to be, you know, materialistic and to look at yourself in the mirror a lot. <laughs> but the Bible is is our mirror. It helps us help, helps us reveal to us what needs to be fixed, right? It's better to fix it before someone else tells us, right? Or you know, <laughs> you don't want to be like the person who goes out and they didn't shower and everyone's like, what's that smell, <laughs> right? <laughs> you, no, you don't want to offend them. So you take a shower and you dress nice and you, you know, fix your appearance so you don't offend anyone, right? The same thing with our spiritual life. If we go out without cleansing ourselves through the word of God and through repentance, <clears throat> then we could offend a lot of people, unfortunately, and be a stumbling block. Uh, to many. Of course, we all are because we all are sinners still, but it's different with the person who doesn't care and, and uh, uh, this is how I am. You know, if you don't like it, go, go, just leave, right? Versus the person's like, oh, I'm sorry, let me fix that as best as I can. Is that better? Um, this, is the, this is the spiritual um, uh, or the, the humble response to changing ourselves. Um, and when we do it with the word of God, it's easier to do it with others. When we say, oh, the word of God is telling me today, uh, I need to be more humble, or I need to be more obedient, or I need to control my anger, or I need to take care and love others more, then, then I'll be try to be quick to hear, right? Um, and if someone else tells me, I might say, well, okay, that person is telling me, but maybe God is also using them to tell me the same message. Um, and when they line up together, then you know, okay, I, I'm not going to be offended in the person. God is continuing his message from the other things around me and the other people around me. This is what happened when, you know, for example, when St. Anthony wanted um, 
to go into to the desert, um, or he wanted to live a spiritual life. Um, and he went to the outskirts, and then there was someone uh, uh, bathing, right, I guess without clothes, and he was starting to criticize the person, right? And then they told him, if you want, if, if, what do you expect? <laughs> if you want to be perfect, go to the inner desert. Don't go out here. So he took this as a message from God, not from the person. Um, <clears throat> uh, and, you know, uh, as you know, in the desert fathers, there's another story of, of a monk who couldn't really memorize scripture. And he tried and he read daily. And he went to the father and the spiritual guide. And he said, you know, I can't really memorize. Um, and uh, he said, it's okay. Um, he, in, actually, he didn't say it's okay in the beginning. Usually, they give them a task for them to apply the message in, in their daily life. Um, <clears throat> and he said, well, um, I want you to take this. You know, they made the baskets uh, of palm leaves, right? They, that's well, one of the works that, of the monks that they used to do. Um, and he told them, go fill it up with water and, and bring it back. I'm sure you know the story. And he asked him, he said, it's impossible. Well, just do it anyway. <laughs> do it and come back. I was like, it's empty. Okay, do it again. Come back. It's like, it's empty. Um, who cares if it's empty? Look at it now. Is there any change? Yes, it's cleaner, right? Same thing with us. If we can't memorize, we still have to read, <laughs> right? And if we still read, there's a transformation that happens. So it's pointless. I'm just reading about, you know, the history of this king and that. Don't worry about the details. Read out of obedience. Try to get something out of it. Um, even if you don't, there's still a change that, that is happening. It's like when you, when you water a seed, how long does it take for, for it to grow? It doesn't happen overnight. I watered it constantly for days. Just wait a little longer. Uh, just make sure you don't stop. Um, and eventually, when the time comes, you'll need it. Um, like with the scripture of today, uh, the Lord in, is sending a message saying, when there is a problem, or when there is difficulty, or when there is tribulation, or when there is temptation, the real person will be revealed. So it doesn't necessarily matter if you read and you like it, and that's nice, right? He said, well, that's, that's one type of ground where it's, it's good, but when the tribulation happens, you need the scripture, right? You need to lean on, on God's word and to be filled by it. And during tribulation, that's how you can tell, you know, uh, how much of uh, a root um, uh, the, that has grown in you from the scripture. If, if you're doing it daily and honestly and faithfully, then it will support you in tribulation and temptation. If not, you'll fall on your face and say, okay, now I need to do this more seriously. Um, <clears throat> so um, the word of God is bread. The word of God is our mirror. The word of God is our telescope. Um, and one metropolitan bishop wrote this. He said, the Bible is like a telescope. If a man looks through, through his telescope, then he sees worlds beyond, right? But if he looks at his telescope, Oh, that's very nice. Then you don't see anything. But so the question is, how are we looking at the Bible? Are we looking at it? Oh, it's very nice. Pages are nice. The word is nice. Or we are looking through it to see what is beyond, to see God, to see the kingdom, to see the spiritual life. Um, <clears throat> so it is a means by which we are in touch with the kingdom and with the king. Um, so sometimes we just take the Bible as what it is, you know, from first hand look. Um, but no, we need to see through it to to see God and to see the kingdom. Um, again, these seem to be just words, but the the purpose of what we're saying is to to transform our understanding of what the Scripture is and what it can do um, through me and in me. Um, <clears throat> so um, the last you know, few points we say, okay, we have to read with depth. Like we, we don't just scatter the seed on the, on the, you know, um, the wayside, 
but we insert it deep, insert it deep into our minds and into our hearts. And it needs pre preparation and time. We can say, okay, I read, I read my verse today. <laughs> I'm good, right? Um, that's why the church says, no, you have to sit, you have to contemplate, you have to think, you have to try to apply. It's, it's, uh, uh, it needs time and effort. Um, Origin, the scholar, he says, Lord, inspire us to read your scriptures and to meditate on them, should be on them, day and night. We beg you to give us real understanding of what we need, that we may in turn put its precepts into practice, make us worthy to, to, to read and to act. Right? So we ask that the words of scriptures may also be not just signs on page, but channels of grace into our hearts. Um, that's the word, the word of God. That's why we go into the depth. Right? And I already mentioned this part, but we said we read with discipline. Uh, as St. John Chrysostom, the golden mouth, as he is called, he who wishes and strives to obtain the gifts of grace, God himself would grant everything. But he who ha has no wish exerts no effort. So, right, we say, okay, so my first step, okay, I want to wish <laughs> to have this discipline. And, and so I will exert effort and at least having this daily discipline, um, then even what he thinks he has will bring him no benefit, right? <laughs> so it's kind of like the parable of the talents, right? If, if we don't participate and invest, then it will be taken away and given to someone else who was serious. Um, the, the, the last point, like we said, is the golden ear. And I think I mentioned this story before, but nevertheless, it still deserves uh, to repeat it because um, I think it, it reminds us of, of what needs to be done. So as many of you know, St. John Chrysostom is one of the great fathers who has a multitude of contemplations on scripture, especially the epistles of St. Paul. Um, <clears throat> and he, he was consecrated himself completely to understand the scriptures. And um, he used to love St. Paul so much, he put an icon in his cell of St. Paul. Um, and so one time he was writing on his commentary on uh, one of his epistles. I think it was Roman, I'm not sure. And he, he says, he thought to himself, you know, who knows whether or not I'm, I'm writing this, um, this, it's pleasing to God or not. I, I could be wrong, right? Um, <clears throat> he says, I'm, ha, did I really understand the power of this part of the scripture? So he began to pray and ask God to reveal to him the truth of the matter. Um, so um, one night in his service, he... he um, there was someone very important um, who, who had a problem and he needed to speak to St. John. So he told him before, okay, come, come to my residence and we'll speak about it. Um, and as the custom was, you have a disciple. So his disciple, Proclus, St. Proclus, um, uh, received him and he said, okay, let me check to make sure, you know, he's, um, he's okay. <clears throat> so instead of knocking, he looked through the keyhole and he saw that he was already with someone, um, venerable elder. And um, he said, sorry, he's, he's busy. <laughs> Can you come back tomorrow? And so he came back tomorrow, same thing. I didn't know how this guy came and how he left. He, st he stood up late waiting to see the, the person leave and by matins, he, he, um, he looked through the keyhole, the guy was gone. <laughs> so it happened three nights in a row. Um, <clears throat> and then after a while, St. John asked Proclus, where's the person who came to, to meet me? He's like, um, he came, but uh, you were busy with someone. He's like, I don't understand uh, who, who was, uh, what, did, what did you see? <laughs> um, he said, Master, I see someone speaking to your ear at night. Um, and so he said, can you describe further? He said, yeah, he looks like the, the, the person in, in your picture on, on your desk or in, in your room. Um, and so he got the message. Um, <clears throat> St. Paul was whispering to him the explanation of his words of, in the epistle as he was writing. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he fell to the ground and he gave thanks to God and he wept with tears. Um, 
And he said, okay, I'm going to devote my, my life for, for, for this. Um, <clears throat> and some people say, in, I think the, in the Greek church, they say that they have the relics of St. John's ear <laughs> and it's, it's um, preserved. It's not just bone, but the flesh is still on it because of this. And I don't know why we don't call him the golden ear. We <laughs> shouldn't call him the golden ear. And that, but everyone said the golden mouth because his co commentaries are um, unique, <laughs> to say the least. Um, so what we're saying, okay, let's try to read with this golden ear. Maybe we don't have St. Paul or St. John whispering into our ear, but we have the Holy Spirit. Uh, who, who, who directed them in their life. And so when we read the word of God like this, um, in this opportunity, and it's a whisper, it's not necessarily a scream. Some people expect, I need God to scream to me. <laughs> God doesn't usually work like that. If you look at the story of Elijah, which we mentioned before, it's a small whisper. That's the Holy Spirit usually works like that. So in order to hear the whisper, we have to, be in a quiet place. We have to be alone. We have to be undistracted. Um, so that's why sometimes we recommend, you know, early in the morning or late at night. Uh, of course, if you want to do it during the day, that's fine. But when there's no distraction or minimal distraction, if you will, even if our heart is distracted, sometimes our minds um, are preoccupied, you know, throughout the day with a lot of uh, responsibilities. Um, so we need to find a time and a place where these distractions are at, as min at, at minimum so we can hear the whisper um, of God. May God give us the, the power of the seed to flourish in our hearts and in our minds and in our, our lives. Um, and glory be to him now and from to the age lives. Any questions? Questions? We usually don't have any online, so <laughs> maybe in person we have some questions. Maybe? Okay. Um, so we have, oops, everyone's still here, right? <laughs>